All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Sheree Faye, 754266. Octavia, my name is Brendan Kelsey, along with me is Ms. Cheryl Ronobs and Mr. Tony Marabella. We'll be your panel, explain the process to you, read some information to the record, have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Tammy Faye, DOC number 754266. You're a first class offender, not eligible for good time. Full term date 4-21-2024. Five year sentence. Human trafficking, two counts, pandering, two counts. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. And then we have Mr. J. Bright Clark, Nicole Earnhardt, Cassidy Carroll, and Baron Logan, and uh, some will speak at the appropriate. All right. Uh, would you answer Mr. Renatz's question, please? Good morning, Ms. Faye. Good morning. Uh, how old are you, ma'am? I'm 49. How long have you been in jail? Four years. I'm sorry, excuse me? Four years? Yes. So you've served four years of your five-year sentence. Yes, So when um, I've reviewed all the information that was provided to us, um, I see, well, the record indicates that you are the leader of a human trafficking operation. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and... Um, as part of that operation, you were forcing women to commit sex acts in exchange for, for dollars. And then you use that money to buy drugs. Uh, you know, what's, what's concerning to me, the record also reflects that you also drugged your son to force him to have sex with you. No, ma'am. No, that's what the record says. So um, you've been, as you mentioned, you've been in jail four years. Uh, what have you been able to do uh, in terms of rehabilitation in those four years? I took the year-long um, class that was ordered for me to take for sex offenders. I have um, been, you know, self, you know, I've been reviewing my own self for my own actions for everything I've done. I have um, not got no write-ups. I've been working um, in a garden crew with the cleanup crew and a yard crew, keeping myself um, busy. And I have also um, contacted a, a church that does uh, programs in New Orleans, and they ex accepted me to come there to do more um, classes, more um, you know rehabilitations to better. Um, for me to produce a better member of society. Where's that at? Um, it's in uh, New Orleans. Millie West is my caseworker that I've contacted and she they accepted me so that way they could put me through more classes and help me um, get you new know, work and better make my, help me be a better uh, for society a member to be able What's to that? help oh, other stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's the name of that program? Um, it's Charity Catholic Charities. Uh, Millie West. I could give you her. Um, she gave me a okay. personal cell. It's okay, Catholic Charities. That's all I need. <laughs> Have you ever had a mental health evaluation? Uh, no, ma'am. Our uh, risk. The instrument we use to determine risk, risk of reoffending, suggests that. You have uh, significant needs in terms of mental health treatment. Okay. Also, substance abuse. Tell us about your substance abuse history. Um, from 18, 19 is the only time I had I did drugs, and I. Uh, that's another thing I did enroll um, at that Catholic church was AA. They asked me if I needed help with drugs. And I told them I would like to take all the classes and treatments they have for that also. So you indicated that you were 18 or 19. That was the only time you had drug substance abuse issues. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 2018 and 2019. Oh, 2018. 2000. I misunderstood. Why were you involved in the business of human trafficking? To be honest, I really, I'm, I'm not going to lie, 
I did not even realize at that moment, at that time, recognize that I was even involved in that, like, like that until after I got locked up and I sat and looked at everything and violated my own self and I take full responsibility for anything that I wasn't aware of and what I was aware of. What did and you think I don't want that to happen. Doing? What did you think were doing? If it wasn't human traffic, what did you think? We well the lady of the property and um the guy that stayed with her had us cleaning up their property. And that's why I got a big old yellow dumpster and I had out there. Um, she wanted us to take everything out and off the property and all that um, double wide and restore the double wide. And she, to, um, that's what she had us to do. I mean, she was supplying everything. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't sure really what was going on. We was all doing our own little thing. Um, and I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I probably do it myself. But we always do Little thing, I really did not know it was that until after I got locked up, and that's what I was sold. And so now I take full responsibility for anything and everything. I don't want to hurt nobody, I right. want to help Thank myself. Thank you. All right, well, we'll hear from uh, Mr. Cole Earnhardt. Okay, I, I want to read my victim statement that I had written to the Louisiana Board of Parole and Parole. So it's okay, we're, we're having a hard time here. You got a bad connection. Not really a day goes here. by that constantly reminds me what happened. Are you able to hear? me now a little bit keep going hello hear me okay go ahead keep mind going. in my memories i see and feel her in the dark and in the shadows the tattoos that was branded by her remind me of the horrors she forced me into and the absolutely heartbreaking thing about it is that i trusted her months before the trafficking situation came to light before it was found out I had been homeless in Biloxi, Mississippi. She had come to Biloxi with Bradley and Kat one night to come and find me, sitting outside of a gas station. She begged me for two days to come with her to her home in Louisiana, where she promised me to get my life in order. It took me two days because my gut had me thinking something wasn't right about it. She wasn't a stranger to me at that time, as I had known the kids for about a year before all this happened. I was an easy target in her eyes, considering I was homeless, alone on the streets, in a very abusive relationship. She offered me safety and recovery, and instead I received further abuse and isolation. To this day, I struggle deeply with forgiving myself for trusting her. What happened for months after that are the most horrific things a human being can imagine or experience. Once I ended up where she was taking me, I found myself in a broken down trailer, floorboards rotting through the outside with no electricity and no water. I was allowed to sleep. There was a mattress surrounded by dog feces that the place was from floor to ceiling. And once I was with her, it was too late to run. Not until I planned my escape, which allowed me to be here with you now. And the things that I experienced on a daily basis were horrifying. To this day, that still haunts me in my nightmares. She made me do things, horrible things that I have not spoken to about anyone. And the only reason I didn't plan my escape immediately was because of the kids she had in the house too. Bradley and Kat became my family. We cried with each other and we were there through every minute with each other. My body is out of that dark, disgusting place, but there are parts of my mind that will always be covered in her haunting shadow reminding me of that ominous feeling I had which each day that I was trapped in that place. The physical darkness, we only had Christmas lights to allow us to see the spiritual darkness and it's a miracle I survived. She introduced me to a lot of bad people and so I was always scared of somebody finding me, which is why I haven't come and spoken out until now. I stood out when I spoke down there, and so they knew I was there. She more people into the house to see me, and I never felt 
fighting qualities were a selling point to her. I was a commodity. I was a good for sale, not human in her eyes. She made me do horrible things, things that stripped me of my innocence, my dignity, my self-worth, and my humanity. I was a hurting, vulnerable girl, and she turned me into an object for sex for her profit. I remember one day I stood up to her, and she grabbed her homemade three-pronged leather whip she used for sex fantasies and said if I ever talked back to her, that it would be much worse. From that moment, I was so scared to leave. My voice has been stripped. She took my phone and everything I had to contact the outside. I had found a boy named Tony who was also in the house that the plan was for me to be going with those men from the cartel. Here for real, and that's when I decided to run. I ran to the first safe place I could find a Taco Bell where they asked to hide in the morning and thank God the sanctuary those workers provided me. Did I ask to be trafficked? No. Tammy Faye befriended me. She told me she was helping to get my life together. It was too late to run once I was with her. I have been plagued mentally in nightmares and quite often things will trigger horrific memories, thus causing me to develop PTSD. I'm scared of people. I'm scared for my safety, which is why I have stayed quiet until now. This is the first time in four years that I have written or spoken about the horrors that went in that house. It has been very painful to relive it all. I'm hoping that what you have read, you will understand the kind of person she is and will always be. She didn't just pull me into this hell, but she pulled her own children into her. And she forced me to have sex with her son. She will victimize anybody for her own gain, even her own flesh and blood. Their involvement in their mother's evil world shatters my heart and I pray for their recovery and their pursuit of a happy life every day because I grew to love them through our shared trauma and abuse. But damn if I is a manipulator. I didn't see a way out, but I had God in my life and I trusted he would save my life and I had hope. And I realized, try to steal my voice, my dignity, my self-worth. And I realized those things can't be stolen. So here I am, reclaiming my voice back, reclaiming my dignity back, and reclaiming my worth back. I don't belong to anyone but God and myself. So I hope this letter helps you come to the conclusion that Tammy Faye shouldn't breathe air yet until her sentence is served. The horrors she inflicted on me cannot be rehabilitated. She is not fit for society. And please do the right thing in this hearing and to see that our painful recounting of the trauma and abuse that she's put myself and others through is beneficial and righteous. And thank you so much for letting me speak today. Ma'am, thank you. I'm so sorry for you. Thank you. All right, we'll now hear from uh, Ms. Cass. I cannot even begin or take multiple Even today, I can't sleep for a whole night. Nightmares. Those nightmares, only are they absolutely horrifying. Meaning, not only am I seeing everything she and it's over and over again. I can feel it. I can hear it. Smell it. So I'm right back at the session. I have a the mirror to brush my hair, teeth, or apply makeup to the street. So wordlessness starts every time I I feel every time I look. You should not be allowed to walk free after just five years. She will do this again. I have no doubt about it. She is not capable of changing. She did these awful, disgusting, despicable things to her own son, not just me and Nicole. So obviously, she is very comfortable doing this to people. 
I can't say this enough. She is not sorry, no matter what she says. She is a manipulator and a snake in the grass. She will do whatever she has to do to make sure that Tammy is taken care of. Because Tammy is the only thing Tammy is capable of getting, sorry, caring about. Please, I implore you today to consider her and not let her out. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Baron, you want to make a brief statement? Oh. Are you good? Okay. All right, well, now we'll hear from the assistant DA, Mr. Clark. Good morning. Thank you. Um, on. Some comments on this case. This is obviously a horrific case dealing with two young victims who were taken advantage of. Uh, because of their unfortunate circumstances in life. Among the number of unfortunate situations is the fact that uh, Ms. Fay Will has only received a five-year sentence, despite this fact that she has done an incredible amount of damage in this case to these two, uh, to these two young ladies. Furthermore, she wants to join a program which will potentially give her the, the opportunity to now have contact with more vulnerable youths that she can use to her advantage once more. This case is horrible on a number of levels. There is a distinct lack of remorse, acceptance, or anything on the part of Ms. Faye. I agree with the victims. She is a manipulator. She's attempting to manipulate this, the situation again and the damage that she has caused to these two young people is completely, uh, uh, doesn't matter to her. In this case, the state is vehemently opposed to any parole based on the uh, nature of the crime. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, Ms. Faye, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? <clears throat> oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, hang on a second. Hang on just a second. All right, go ahead and make it, go ahead and make your statement. Yes, sir. I am sorry for anybody and, and everybody that got hurt. I do, I am deeply apologize. I know that I can't change anything, but what I can change is the future. What I can change is is better myself to better others. I'm not trying to go out there to harm anybody. I'm trying to go out there to live a life like anybody else. I was, I mean, we all victims to something. I am wrong for what I have done. And, you know, and the way things was done to me too. Um, but to, what I'm looking at is everybody can love one another and rehabilitate. I'm not trying to go and play God on my own anymore. I'm not trying to do that. What I want is a chance to go out there to better my life, to move forward, and to continue with my treatment that I plan, that I have set up a plan for me to treat myself still while I'm out there, still getting help. Something I should have got a long time ago. I just want a chance to be able to go out there and show that not everybody that does wrong will go back out there and do the same thing over or do wrong. Everybody deserves a chance. And I would like that chance to go out there and show y'all that I can go out there and be a better person. All right, thank Every you. Every day. Right, you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, Miss Tammy, I... Uh, I, I hear what you're saying. I've also heard what the, uh, those who have spoke today, I believe you need some more programs uh, while you're still incarcerated to address your antisocial thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, also victim awareness so that you can gain a really good understanding of the harm you've caused uh, and the impact that your actions have had on the victims. My vote today is to deny your parole. Mr. Marabella. Thank you. Ms. Fay, uh, strikes me that, that you, you don't seem to understand the significance of the harm caused to these victims. 
as stated earlier, you didn't even know what all was going on. That faith of denial or may I speak? Back, sir? No, ma'am, I'm speaking now. Uh, you know, I, I, I do think that you need to look inwardly and realize what you've done on the cost. I agree with uh, not the program or the six programs that will assist you in your Understand and recognize what you thought. I have two votes to deny. I'm also going to vote to deny your parole for the same reason you stated. You weren't honest with us today. So three votes to deny. Your parole's been denied. Okay, thank you. 